Hi, I'm Sam from ST. Um, I am a trained physiotherapist and also a nurse with a background in wound care. And for the last decade, I've been working with um, venous leg ulcers and lymphedema. And with me today, I've got Sarah Gardner. Sarah, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Hi, I'm Sarah Gardner. I'm an independent wound care advisor now, but I uh, fairly recently left the NHS after nearly 40 years. Um, my last job was a tissue viability lead um, in Oxfordshire. I'm also a trustee for the Tissue Viability Society, which supports uh, the Legs Matter Coalition, which I am part of as well. Brilliant. Thank you, uh, Sarah. What I'd like to do now is show you a short video uh, regarding compression therapy. And if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A site or the um, chat side. So if we could start the video, please. Hi, and welcome to another session of Legs Matters Natter. I'm Sam, and today we're going to be looking at compression therapy and how it works. Because as part of looking after your legs, wearing compression therapy or wearing compression garment is a really, really, really important stage. To be able to do this, though, we first need to understand a bit more about the body, how fluid moves around the body so that we can then understand the importance of using a compression garment. We need to have a look and see about the number of garments that are out there on the market because it can be completely mind blowing trying to decide what to use and when to use it. Um, and again, these are sort of conversations that you would have with your clinician because your clinician will be able to advise you on the best garments to suit your condition at the moment. But ultimately as clinician, our aim is to get you a garment or a device that best suits your need as well. And this might mean having a couple of garments some for during the day at work, some for when you're at home and relaxing, just so we can get you the best care that we possibly can. And to allow you to look after your legs as independently as you possibly can. We then want to look at how does compression actually work? What does it do and how does it work? Because once we understand that, we can then start to look and see what garments might be suitable for our stage of the treatment. And then lastly, I want to show you about what happens if things go wrong and what we're trying to avoid as clinicians. So in the body, we have our circulatory system and it contains your heart that sits up here in your chest, your arteries, and they take the oxygen rich blood with the nutrients in it to all the tissues in your body. And then we have the veins that bring back the deoxygenated blood back towards your heart where it goes to your lungs, oxygen's put back into the blood and so the cycle continues. Now obviously our heart is there and it squeezes and it pumps that blood out and it forces at high pressure that blood out to your extremities, your fingers and your toes. Unfortunately there's no pump for the venous system, there's no heart in your big toe that's pushing that blood back up towards your heart. What we do have are various different actions that help push the blood back up towards your heart. So within the veins, there are one way valves that open and shut. So as the blood passes back up, the valves open, allow the blood up, they shut behind it to stop the blood pulling. We call it pulling at the bottom in your extremities. The other big, big, uh, I suppose, mechanism of action to push the fluid or the deoxygenated blood back up to your heart when we're talking about your legs are your muscles and we talk about the calf muscle pump so if you're sitting and able to do so safely if you um, point your toe away from you and then bring your toes towards your nose and look at the shape of your leg and it changes it goes from being elongated as you point your toes away to when you bring your toes towards your nose, your calf muscle looks a bit shorter and fatter. And what happens is as your calf muscle becomes shorter and fatter, it presses on those veins and that squeezing action of the veins pushes blood back up towards the heart. 
so if you have to sit a lot or you're unable to walk an awful lot or move, what happens is that calf muscle is not working as effectively as it should. Therefore, it's not pressing on the veins and pushing that blood back up towards the heart. So a top tip for all of us that do a lot of sitting is doing that movement off the ankle. Point your toes and then bring them towards your nose. And that helps push fluid back up towards the heart. OK, we've talked about the arterial and venous system, but there's a third part to the system. It's a separate system, but it works in conjunction with the heart and the arteries and the, the veins. And this system is called the lymphatic system. And it's basically your body's waste disposal system. What it does is it gathers up all the excess fluid in the tissue spaces and all the cell debris, anything that the venous system isn't able to mop up is mopped up through the lymphatic system. That fluid then travels throughout the body and then it re-enters the circulatory system back up within the thoracic area. Now, throughout the body, you have clusters of lymph nodes that are part of the lymphatic system and these lymph nodes help filter the fluid. And although they are throughout the whole body, you find clusters in specific areas like your head and neck under your arms. And when we're talking about your lower leg, you have clusters mainly up in the groin. And keep that to mind when we look at problems with compression therapy later on, because sometimes we find if we just treat the area below the knee, we can actually push that fluid just above the knee and cause a further problem above the knee, a further area of swelling. Now what I want to look at is the various different types of garments that are out in the market. And as you can see from the slide in front of you, there are lots and lots to choose from. And sometimes it can be quite daunting to know what type of garment to use and when. And you may find that you want one sort of garment during the day and something else later on at night when you're home. Uh, when you're resting. So having a basic understanding of some of these uh, types of compression therapies available to you may help you and your clinician make an informed decision. So the, the one that most people understand are bandages and there's two different types of bandage systems. There's your lymphedema bandages which are quite solid, they're quite stiff and then we have our um, venous disease bandages, so treating leg ulcers that are slightly more elastic. And again, your clinician will have an understanding of what garments to use and when to use them. We have wrap systems on the market as well, and they act very similar to, um, or a very similar mechanism of action to compression bandages, in that they're a Velcro fastening device and they contain, or, or they stop the limb from swelling. And they're quite useful in some of the stages of uh, looking after your leg as well as for those of you that struggle to put on compression socks, the Velcro devices can be quite a, quite a handy thing to think about. We also have um, hosiery, compression hosiery. So we've got our ready to wear, so you can just grab it from the shelf and pop it on your leg. Or we have custom fit garments that are made to measure and fit your life, uh, your life and your leg. Then we have uh, ulcer uh, kits, which are usually two layers of um, compression garments that you wear one on top of the other and what that does is it gives you that pressure that you need for healing that leg also during the day and then at night you can take off one layer and still be getting some sort of therapeutic dose of compression. The last picture on this slide here is, is a pneumatic compression device and this is something that a specialist would use with you and it inflates and deflates and basically it would inflate at the bottom of your leg, then further up, then further up and de gradually deflate behind it. So it's creating a kind of massage effect on your limb. So what do compression garments actually do? Well, in a nutshell, they're going to move fluid from an area swollen to an area where it can drain more effectively. And like I was just saying about the pneumatic compression, some of the garments actually provide a little bit of a massage effect, especially the elastic garments. So how does it do this? 
Well, we talk about graduated compression and what that means is with the compression garment that you're wearing, we have 100% of the pressure at your ankle. And then as that garment goes up your leg, the actual pressure itself decreases. So this means that blood flows in one direction, which is up the way back towards your heart. This will then encourage the blood and waste products back up to where they need to be in the body to be recycled. Now, I have my trusty balloon with me. And when we're talking about compression garments, um, as well as talking about the pressure that the garment is exerting on your leg, we also to look, need to look at the elasticity and the stiffness of the garment, because depending on the amount of swelling you have in your leg will depend on what type of garment you use. OK, so bear with me a second. So in my balloon here, this is going to show you what an elastic garment is wanting to do. So I have this uh, balloon here with air in it. And if I let go of this balloon, the recoil of the elastic in the balloon is going to force the air out of it. Just like that. OK. So the force of the elastic of the balloon is higher than the force of the air in here and it pushes the air straight out the top. And this is what your elastic compression garment should be doing. However, the sort of caveat to that is there are some garments that might be too elastic for the amount of fluid that's within your leg. So if I had this balloon here, um, and I filled it full of fluids, which I'm not going to do because I know I'll be clumsy and knock it all over my laptop. But if I filled this balloon full of water, what would happen to this is the pressure of the water or the force of the water in here is actually going to overcome the elastic recoil of this balloon. And it's actually going to cause the balloon to swell and change shape. So just to recap, the force of the fluid within this balloon is going to be higher than this elastic is going to be able to take and this balloon will swell as I fill the balloon full of water. And this is what can happen on those of you that have swollen limbs, that as the limb swells, the actual garment swells with the limb and that means it's too elastic and it's not able to contain the edema. Therefore, what we need to look about is getting you something that's stiffer so just to show you this, we have a, a, an elastic compression stocking here. And as you can see, we can stretch this quite a distance. If I then hold up an inelastic stocking um, that is slightly stiffer, it doesn't move an awful lot. So for those of you that have a, um, quite long standing edema, uh, quite a big swelling in your leg that won't go away or your leg feels quite woody to touch, it might be that you need a stiffer fabric rather than something that's elastic that is going to swell as the limb swells. So what do we use and when do we use it? When you look at this diagram here, you have two circles. We don't need to go into all the details of the circle, but suffice to say the blue circle is the first stage of your treatment. So this is where your limb is swollen and you're wanting to reduce the swelling in the limb to get as normal limb shape as you can possibly get. Once that limb is down to the smallest size that you can get, you then want to maintain that limb to stop it re-swelling. So these two circles depict the two different stages of treatment. Stage one, which is the decongestion phase, and stage two, which is the maintenance phase. So for the decongestion phase, this initial phase of getting the limb to reduce in size, you're really talking about using bandages or wrap systems because they can change size and shape as your limb reduces. So again, think about what they're going to do and how and have a, a really good conversation with your clinician about what might be more suitable for you. Bandage systems were designed in effect to work similar um, similarly to a bandage. But the positive thing about wrap systems are that you can use them yourself or your carers can help you apply them. Whereas with a bandage system, a, clinic, a trained clinician needs to apply the bandages. Both are bulky, 
However, the wrap systems are a lot less bulky than bandages. When we then start looking at moving on to the maintenance phase, which was the green circle, so we've reduced the limb and we're trying to keep it as small as possible, there's various different garments that are, that are out there in the market. But broadly speaking, they fall into two categories. They fall into circular knit or flat knit. And this just relates to the way that they're made. So a circular knit garment tends to be the more elastic garments. And it's basically one yarn, it's like you've got a bobbin, a circle of needles, and the yarn goes round and round and round and round and round. These garments tend to look a lot more pleasing on the eye. They look more like a pair of tights or a man's sock. However, remember I was saying about the elasticity, they are very elastic. Therefore, if you do have quite a bit of swelling in your legs, they might not be suitable for you because they can start to dig in and uh, mark the skin. We then move on to flat neck garments. Now, flat neck garments are made more, I suppose, like a piece of denim where you have your different needles, your yarns going across in different directions. You get a flat piece of um, fabric and then they have to bring the fabric round and they sew a seam down the back. Now, these garments are the stiffer garments, but the positive thing with these garments are we can make them to fit your legs exact sizes. And because they're slightly stiffer, instead of them starting to dig in potentially in areas of an uneven shape in your leg, they sit over the top. So they can be an awful lot more comfortable if you're finding that your elastic garment is digging in. What I've got now is just um, a close up of the fabric to show you because there's a big misconception that these thicker garments might actually be a lot more uncomfortable to wear and hotter in summer. But when you look at these close up, what you'll see is these thicker flat neck garments actually have more of an open weave so the air can flow over your leg. So they actually have a bit more of a cooling effect than some of the more elastic circular neck garments you have more of a closed weave. What I want to say to you about uh, a word of caution is it's not just about deciding on a style of garment that you want to wear, but it's thinking about clinically what is going to be best for your leg shape. And this is what can happen if we get it wrong. And when I did my nursing train many, many years ago, I thought that this was just the way that hosiery should be on a leg, that it digs in, that you swell above your garment. But actually, it shouldn't be like this nowadays. We, there are so many technologies out there on the market for you, for you to choose from that we shouldn't see this anymore. So what you're seeing in the picture on the left is what happens if we just compress the lower leg and we only move the fluid to above the knee. Remember I was saying that there's these clusters of lymph nodes that help drain that fluid in the groin. Sometimes, and not in everyone, in some people, if we just wear a below the knee stocking, we're not actually pushing that fluid to where we need to push it to. We're just shifting the problem to the knee area. So if you find that your garment is causing you to swell above the knee, please speak to your clinician about considering a thigh length garment that's going to drain that fluid and push it a lot closer to these clusters of lymph nodes. What the picture on the right shows is what happens again if we've chosen a garment that's too elastic for the leg shape and it starts to dig in. And if you can see on my wrist here with my um, hairband, you can see the, the indentation on my wrist from something that's elastic. And this is what can happen and this is what we need to be very careful that we try and avoid. Because if this does happen, the potential is we can cause skin damage. And what we don't want to do is cause a wound on that leg. So in summary, there is a lot of choice out there for you on the market regarding hosiery choices. Um, lots, they, they all work in slightly different ways. And what we're really trying to do is to support your veins and your lymphatic system and push this fluid out of your leg. But what we need to do is work with you as the, the, the sort of the patients, those that have issues with your legs to get that choice right, because 
this isn't something a compression garment isn't something that you're just going to wear for one day this is a life choice you if you want the best out of your legs and to maintain your legs in the best health that we possibly can your compression garment has to fit in with you and your lifestyle on a daily basis and this may mean having slightly different garments for different uh, times of the day and top 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 tip that i would give you and please 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 remember that we don't always get the right hosiery choice for you first time it might be that we have to think about looking at a different hosiery choice and don't ever give up on it because there will be the right garment there for you we just need to work with you to find which garment it is thank you very much for listening well, I hope that was quite informative. Um, please keep your questions coming in and let us know if there's anything that you didn't understand or that you need clarified, because there was quite a bit of information in that um, video there. Um, Sarah, I was wondering from yourself, what are the sort of common concerns you get from patients wearing compression hosiery? Is there a common theme that, that, that you see? Um, I think... Um... The common themes really is around application, mm -hmm. uh, the difficulties of, of getting hosiery on. Um, some patients find it uncomfortable. And from my experience, it's possibly because they haven't got the right garment on. Um, you know, watching that then, I just thought this is a minefield, isn't it? The, yeah. the, uh, um, and I do feel that the whole hosiery sort of agenda has has sort of exploded over the last few years positively that now there is so much more choice for patients and therefore as you said in, in your presentation you know we we can get this right and it could be we don't get it right first time round, but there is a solution for you i think that requires knowledge of from the clinician yeah um not all clinicians are very knowledgeable about hosiery um, and it's often you know you need to be signposted maybe to a specialist service such as tissue viability or lymphedema service for example um, because we need to you know often you'll get on formulary set hosiery but access to a specialist is we can go beyond that and make sure that we get the right hosiery system for you um, so i think there's some issues also around what it looks like yeah. Um, especially for women, if they're wearing dresses or skirts, maybe the wrap systems don't look aesthetically pleasing for them. But, you know, th there is a solution out there for you. But I think it's working with a knowledgeable practitioner, seeking advice from, say, companies like your own to get it right for these people. And, and we can make a difference, definitely. Yeah. And I think on part of what you were saying there, uh, and part of what I'm trying to get across is there's the clinical need of the leg and then there's what you're able to wear or you're willing to wear um, and exactly what you were saying some of the garments aren't very pleasing on the eye so it might be clinically that um, you need a stiffer garment mm -hmm. but it might be that when you're out you maybe as a, giving an example your female patient wearing a skirt maybe they, they will put on a more elastic garment that looks a bit more acceptable. And just having that choice of what you can wear and when you can wear it, I think it's really important. Yes, and I think, you know, talking about the stiffer garments, there is this sort of assumption that they won't look as good or they'll be more uncomfortable. But as you said, you know, if you've got swelling in your legs, an elastic system often won't manage that. So your legs will remain swollen and uncomfortable or the hosiery that you've got, if it's elastic, will dig in. You know, from my experience, I've had so many failures and patients who are so reluctant to go into hosiery because of bad experience, because of bad application or the wrong choice. And it's trying to persuade them um, to, to try, you know, to, to, to consider a, a stiffer garment. And it goes back right to the beginning, understanding their condition um, and, and why we are suggesting that this particular uh, garment um, is, is, is suitable for them, really. I, I, and on that note, we've had a question come in regarding someone that has a desk job. So they're sitting all day, a bit like we are at the moment with lockdown. <laughs> We're not doing a lot of face-to-face -face patient visits at the moment. 
And yes, wearing um, wearing a sort of lightweight compression garment prophylactic, uh, prophylactically would be ideal. I think it, in my ideal world, I would love to see all of us, anyone that has a, standing on their feet all day, chefs, hairdressers, sitting all day like I am just now, um, we should all be taking those steps. And I think when you look at places in Europe, like Germany, um, they're a lot better at the preventative um, approach to looking after your legs, whereas clinicians, we tend to deal with crisis management, don't we, Sarah? Oh, honestly, we should practice what we preach. Last year for our first uh, Legs uh, Matter Awareness Week, I was in practice then in Oxford, and we had a lot of events going on. And, and one of the things that I managed to sort of get off the ground was, well, okay, we're trying to look after our patients' legs. What about looking after our own? Yeah. So we did get investment in our trust for, which is just brilliant. And we were issuing um, free hosiery to, to staff. And it wasn't just clinical staff. There's a lot of staff in the NHS, like the, the person who's put the question forward, sitting in a sedentary job at a desk. Really important. And that's what Legs Matter is trying to promote. It's looking after your legs now mm -hmm. to prevent these problems in the, in the long term. So, yeah, you, you, I, I would advise you just to get some, some uh, if you haven't got any swelling in your legs, some, some or just some class class one hosiery would, would be fine for you to wear, yeah. Uh, and I would say as well um, that this is my physio head talking now, it's not just about the compression as well, it's all the other little bits that you can do to help yourself, especially in the environment we're in right now. Um, things like your exercise, when I showed the, the diagrams of the circles, although I didn't focus in there, there's lots of other parts to looking after your legs, diet, um, exercise and movement, really good skincare, uh, and Sarah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you could talk uh, for a while on skincare. But I think one of the things we need to look at as well, very briefly, is we need to consider the whole um, aspect of treating the leg. It's not just about the hosiery; that's one aspect. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And and if you are if you aren't mobile, some people aren't, they've got a disability where they can't walk to sort of stimulate that calf pump action. Um, as you demonstrated earlier, you know, you can do these, these exercises seated. Uh, and if you haven't got the ability to, to move your, your, your foot, you know, you can get, um, uh, sometimes I used to just say, put a, a scarf or, or something <laughs> around the foot and gently, you know, pull, mm -hmm. pull that leg forward um, or get some want to help do that for you some people have sort of stiff fixed ankle joints which is yeah. a problem um uh, that's another session in itself uh, <laughs> but you know there are ways of trying to Im improve that that sort of calf pump action um and leg elevation i think someone mentioned yeah. about they've got a foot rest great get your legs up level or higher than your heart that will help with that drainage as well um, and another question, how do we get hold of hosiery and can you get it yourself or do you need to get it on prescription? I know I would recommend always going to a healthcare clinician because what we need to do is make sure that we're um, applying hosiery in, um, in the correct form. And what we don't want to do is to squeeze the leg too much. Again, Sarah, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Yeah, I would say that if you're presenting with what we would say abnormal limbs. So you've got swelling that isn't resolving sort of overnight. It's been there for more than three months. Um, I, I would seek advice from a healthcare professional, go to see your GP or your practice nurse, for example, uh, and you, you require a proper assessment. You know, there's a few tests we need to do to rule out other underlying causes. And, and if you have got this underlying uh, problem, you know, you should be able to get your hosiery prescribed. Um, if it's just about preventive stuff, um, I would suggest that you can get class one hosiery from a pharmacy. Uh, you haven't, re you don't require to um, to have a prescription for that. Uh, and, and you know, it's the importance of knowing that you also need to renew your hosiery. So people say it is expensive, but but. Um, I would suggest probably every six months you need to replace if you have two pairs. So when you compare it to tights that you might buy or socks or, or whatever, it probably would even out at a similar sort of cost, but it's about preventing these problems happening in the long, long run. 
And I think sometimes, uh, again, what's happened recently with uh, being in the sort of COVID-19 situation is some patients have been able to access their, um, to get new garments, and what we would recommend is please speak to one of your healthcare professionals because what will happen over time is that garment won't be as stiff as it should be. It won't exert that pressure that it should have done. So try and follow the washing um, and maintain our maintenance guidelines as much as the manufacturer um, sort of suggests. And if you're still struggling and you feel your legs deteriorating, please, please, please speak to your healthcare professional. Sam, there's a question there for somebody about um, type 2 diabetes, but also um, some clarity on what we mean by class 1 and class 2 hosiery. Do you want to answer that? or? Yeah, so um, uh, the different types of hosieries uh, or, or the different classes of hosiery, class 1, class 2, class 3, really what it is, it's a, it's a system that we use to define the amount of pressure, so the amount of squeeze, the elasticity that that garment or the force that that garment's going to exert in the leg. So with class one being the lowest pressure, um, moving up to class two, which we tend to find um, in the community, we very rarely use class three in the community unless um, usually under the influence or the guidance of a lymphedema practitioner. Um, regarding diabetes, in this case, I would definitely speak to your healthcare professional because what we want to do is just make sure that we're using compression hosiery in a in a safe way yes i mean i would say we, we when i was in oxford we tried to not focus so much on class it was around the compression being exerted yes. and the stiffness of that of that fabric we know we're, we're not going to get into too much of a, <laughs> a complicated conversation here but there are differences between you can also talk about british standard and european standard yes. um so it's it's around the pressure being delivered and um yes if you're linked in with your healthcare professional hopefully they'll have that knowledge and to be able to choose the right garment for you with the right level of compression all I would say about type 2 diabetes, um, it's obviously a very common disease. It doesn't mean that hosiery is contraindicated. What I mean by that is that you can't have it because it would be risky for your limb, for example. But um, as Sam said, um, you know, if you are presenting with swelling in your legs and you have got diabetes, it's really important that you link with your um, healthcare professional to ensure you've had the right tests to ensure that the hosiery is safe to apply. Um, you know, it, it doesn't mean you can't. If you've got swelling in your legs, we need to be treating that underlying condition. And in most cases, hosiery is absolutely safe. But you just need to be checked out by your, your healthcare professional. But we, thank you, Sarah. I think um, if there's no more questions coming through, I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you very much. And uh, these ses this session has been recorded and it can be watched at a later date. So thank you for joining us.